All right, Todd, first off, thanks for joining us. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the season and, and prospects moving forward. But Todd, it's it's been a different season for you. Uh, just I think a lot of fans just look at the record and that's how they break down the season. But let's talk to you and get a little bit more in depth and talk about the season, how this has gone for you. Well, it's been a grind this year, obviously with the uh, 95 transactions we've had or, or, or more than that. Uh, it, it's been tough to maybe get the team together and uh, get them all playing the right way. Uh, but you know what, with, with that being said, we're seeing improvement with a lot of the um, young prospects. And uh, believe it or not, right now we're playing better as a hockey team. We're, we're um, starting to play the right way. We're just not uh, maybe getting the goal support. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, we are playing better hockey and uh, what we have to do is just focus on the process. The outcome will take care of itself. But now it's a time that in the season that we have to really, really make a push to get into the playoffs. I think it's very important that we do so um, because with the experience for the young guys in the playoffs, uh, it goes unmatched. Recently though, signs, signs of light for the Barons? Yeah, I think so. I think um, when you look at our past weekend, we went, we went one and two. Um, the first night um, on the Thursday that we played against Utica, we, we came out a bit flat and we, it was a flat game, but the thing is, is that we had to come back in the third period and um, we found a way to win. And I think that was a character builder for our hockey team. Um, the next night we uh, had a really awful first period actually. It was, it, was a, it was a period of hockey that I have not seen uh, in the Barons organization ever. And, and uh, by the time we woke up, it was too late, but we got better in the second and third. And, and then the next night it was three games and three nights. The guys gave us what, what they had. And uh, you know, we just came up short where we didn't have the goal support. We had opportunities to score goals, but uh, good goal tending on the, uh, the other side, coupled with us uh, maybe missing the net or, or uh, not picking our spot, uh, doomed us. So the thing is, is that we're, we're playing some pretty good hockey. I like the way the, the process is moving and we just have to stick with it. Is it difficult for you when the wins aren't coming, considering the past of this organization with, you know, back to back uh, going to the Western Conference Finals and 40 plus win seasons uh, each of your seasons as a head coach? Is it more difficult now looking back at this season, how it's gone for you with more losses than wins? And well, it makes you appreciate the good times. And, uh, you know, there's always a process. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, in, in years past, um, this is the time of year that our teams really uh, got going, and uh, I expect the same thing to happen to us this year. You know, but it is you know it is tough. You know, but you have to be patient. You know, we're we're uh, young, uh, like on the back end, and it's going to be it's going to be growing pains. We, we we all knew that, and uh, you know, like we just have to be patient with that. But like we're seeing we're seeing uh, improvement out of our young players. Like we're seeing them. Um, uh, progress and, and they're, they're getting better in a lot of areas and, and uh, that's, that's probably the most important thing is getting these guys ready to make the jump to the National Hockey League and uh, you know but it's, it's, it's one of those things where you have to have patience like I mentioned before and, and uh, you just, you just got to keep working with these young guys but the thing um, you know, the thing of it is is that I think that it is you know tough on our group you know because let's face it when you're winning games you're you're, uh, you're, you're, you feel good about yourself, and, and this year it's, 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 it's been a tough grind, but uh, we just got to stick with it. When you look at the past of the Oklahoma City Barons, you had more AHL, established AHL vets, like your Brian Helmers, your Alexander Giroux, your Josh Greens of the world, but it seems like this year you're living or dying by your prospects, your youth. Uh, how does that change your mentality as a coach, the way you coach these players, because completely different roster than you've had the past couple of years? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely made me better as a coach. Uh, you know, you have challenges every night where, you know, you think you're going in the right direction, and all of a sudden you have a, a 10 minute uh, uh, part of the game where the guys forgot everything that you taught them. <laughs> and so you gotta, you gotta stick with it. Um, it. It is a bit different, but the thing is, is that uh, we're seeing progress with our young guys. And, um, you know, like in years past, we've had some of those guys that are more established. Um, Right now, we're going through a situation where, um, I guess you can call it a, a re rebuilding phase for us here. And, uh, you know, but these guys are going to be better hockey players in the end. 
With that, with more responsibility to this youth, have you seen maybe an acceleration in development of these young players? I think it's uh, pretty much similar. Like we, we talked about uh, Marty Marentian and Oscar Clefbaum. Uh, how do I compare their, their, their progress and their development? Um, Marty Marentian had a, had a tough go at it the first half of the season last year. And uh, Oscar's going through the same thing, especially when Oscar hasn't played the whole season last year. Uh, but what we saw to Oscar before he got injured is that he probably played his two or three uh, of his best best games this year. It's so unfortunate he got injured, but he's you know, but he's going to be back here this weekend. But I saw the same thing from Marty Morenson, where you know, up until this point last year, he he was trying to find his game, and then after. Uh, Late January, all of a sudden he just he, he just took off, and uh, we're hoping for the same thing for Oscar. It's it's moving in the same direction. When you look at Tyler Pitlick and, and Martin Marincin as examples this season, getting the call up, more young players this season are getting called up and getting a chance in the NHL. Do you and your coaching staff kind of see that as like a, a pat on the back for how you've developed these young players when they get that call up? Well, like we're very proud that they're going up there and, and performing well. You know, that's 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 our job is to help these guys get better and help out the big club. And uh, when I see the way that Marty Marenci is playing up there and the way that P Tyler Pitlick played, um, Mark Arcabello, same thing. Like these guys are, are contributing and they're doing a lot of good things in the National League. And yes, it's, it, it's, a, it's a very proud moment for us. Um, that's our job is to develop these guys. And uh, you know, those three guys I mentioned have performed excellent up, to, up top so far. When what, what what prospect maybe has surprised you the most this season? Which prospect? Um, you know, I think uh, in that case, like, I think two guys fall into that category: Tyler Pitlick and Curtis Hamilton. I think uh, I don't know if it's so, so much of a surprise, but we we saw both players turn uh, turn the corner. In the case of Curtis Hamilton, once again, it's unfortunate that he got injured, but we saw him play with. Uh, a lot of confidence with the puck. He was chipping in offensively. Uh, he was playing more physical. And uh, he was very good in the penalty kill. Um, Tyler Pitlick, same thing, where he has to play a physical game uh, more consistently. He's understood that. It finally clicked in with him. And uh, I, I can play Tyler on the power player penalty kill and feel, ve feel very confident that he's going to get the job done. So uh, those two guys stand out this year. And it's a good thing. It's, a, it's their third year. It's time for them to turn the corner. And I think they have. You mentioned him before, but Mark Arcabello, let's revisit him for a second. Is he, is he a, probably the biggest victory for the Oklahoma City Barons in their young tenure? I mean, he's establishing himself as a second line center in the NHL right now. I think so. I think it's a fair, uh, f fair statement. I think uh, what, what the impressive thing with Mark is that uh, it's just the process that he went through. Um, his first year, he was in the ECHL. He wasn't ready for this league, and so we used that that tool to our advantage to have him go there, play a lot of minutes, be confident. He came up halfway during the year, and and then he started to excel here. In his second year, he was our second leading scorer. He was uh, arguably our, our first line centerman, and uh, had a had a really good year. And then last year. You know, like he took it to a whole different level where he was our first line centerman, um, led our team in points and, and did everything. If it was uh, uh, penalty kill or power play, he performed well. And the thing about Arcabello is that, you know, I think the one thing that people are starting to see is his character. How he, uh, he's not a very big guy, but he plays the game like he's 6'4". He's not intimidated, he finishes all his checks and uh, He's contributing. I think that's you know, what a hockey player has to do is just play the game the right way and Arco has learned that and he's come through our system and now he's performing well up top. Do you, Todd Nelson, see yourself as a very important piece of the Oilers rebuild? Eventually these players are going to be expected to make an impact at the NHL level. Well, I think we have, uh, I think we have a big job to do. I think that, uh, yes, like we're, me, Rocky and Jerry have a very important, very important role in this, and uh, we know it's it's time to graduate some players to help out the big club. We know it's a situation where the the big club um, wants to get back to where they were in the 80s, and uh, you know, it, it, it all starts here. And 
So we have to, to continue to, to uh, develop these guys, make them better players, and uh, hopefully they become impact players in the National Hockey League. You more so than the fans or media or anybody else get to see on a, a lower level just the development bottom up, going up to the top. Be prophetic for me for a second, looking at that crystal ball. And what do you see from this Oilers rebuild? Do you see signs of, of a bright future moving forward? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, when you look at it, obviously the, the, the Oilers club wants to uh, play a heavier game in the future. Uh, some of the drafts that we've had recently, uh, we, we have some some players with good size and grit. And, um, you know, eventually these guys will help out the big club and, and make, make them... Uh, I guess a heavier t hockey team, but it's going to take time. You know, it's it's not like you can um, have five or six guys every year jump right from junior or college to the National Hockey League. They have to learn the pro game. They have to uh, learn how to compete every night and be consistent with their efforts. And that takes time to uh, to develop uh, with these hockey players. And and uh, some guys develop quicker than others. Um, you know, but. At some point, once again, like we can provide the tools for the for, for the hockey players, but the hockey players themselves have to take ownership into their own development as well. So it's a combination of both. And but I see, but I do see um, the big club getting a lot heavier in the future. When that finally happens, and the Oilers make it back to the playoffs and the rebuild's complete. Are you and your staff going to look back on it and maybe pat yourself on the back and be like, we helped accomplish that? If it does happen, yes, definitely. Um, you know, we're hoping that it happens like really quick, and um, you know, we we do have pride in uh, knowing that players are 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 going up and, and contributing. Uh, but right now, it's it's still not good enough. We have to try to try to accelerate the progress so the big club can have success in the future. Let's talk about Oklahoma City as a city itself, and and you've been here for several years now, and. How do you see it as a development city, the, the area for these young players to grow up in? Well, I think uh, you can talk to every, every player in that dressing room and, and uh, they'll tell you the same thing, where it's a fantastic city to, to play in. Um, the facility we have for the players is at the top of the American Hockey League. Um, just the reaction of the Oilers when they came here for the exhibition game, from some of the players walking into our dressing room, they didn't realize how, how nice the facility was. You know, that coupled with, uh, I believe, my staff is an excellent staff. Um, from our from our trainers to um, to my assistant coaches to uh, Billy Scott, our GM. You know, I think we do a pretty good job of uh, creating a culture here that uh, the players want to come to the rink every day, work hard, and have fun. And I think that's the culture that we're very proud of creating here. Uh, we've heard we've heard from players that have left here and played other places and they keep on saying that this is, these are some of the best years of their hockey career um, just with everything involved with the city um, the facility and just working with the staff so we're very we're very proud of that and i think moving forward it will uh, always get better and um, like i said the players like coming to the rink every day thanks a lot for uh, talking with me today todd all right thanks wesley